Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter here with what will be a particularly short Star Wars Legends lore video. The topic for today's content came up during my recent reading of Star Wars Dark Force Rising, which is book two of the Thrawn trilogy. I was reading it for my podcast, Tapcraft Transmissions, which is sort of like a Star Wars EU book club. I'll be uploading the episode in the next couple of days on the YouTube channel, but in the meantime, you can also listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast services. Link to all of that down in the description. Palpatine was an almost incomprehensible entity. He bent the universe to his will like very few in the history of the Star Wars universe. He instigated the first true destruction of the Jedi Order. He represented over a thousand years of Sith treachery, and he was so powerful that he literally refused to die. But more than just powerful, he was evil. There were no redeeming qualities to Palpatine. He was described by Count Dooku as an event horizon, and by Plagueis as an almost supernatural manifestation of the dark side of the Force. So it's probably unsurprising that his death, even if temporary, would leave a gaping wound in the Force, a marker indicating that something terrible had happened. And as Leia found out in the months before the Thrawn campaign, that marker was located at the place where the Death Star 2 was destroyed, in orbit around Endor. So, Thrawn had been using a species known as the Nogri as commando squads. The Nogri had served the Empire for quite some time, and believed themselves personally indebted to Darth Vader, who they saw as a savior. However, when Thrawn sent the commando squad after Leia, one Nogri named Kabarak discovered that she was the heir to Vader, and at Leia's request set up a rendezvous point. The chosen planet was Endor, given its out-of-the-way nature and galactic unimportance. It was there that a pregnant Leia felt the aftershock of the Emperor's death, and to say it was unpleasant would be an understatement. And abruptly without warning, a black curtain seemed to drop across her vision. Slowly, she became aware that there was a metallic voice calling to her. Your Highness, it said over and over again. Your Highness, can you hear me please? Can you hear me? She opened her eyes, vaguely surprised to discover they were closed, to find Chewbacca leaning over her with an open med pack gripped in one hand, and agitated 3PO hovering like a nervous mother bird behind him. It's revealed that she unconsciously shouted for help, then fainted on the ship's floor. She was overwhelmed by a feeling of, and I quote, anger and bitterness, but at the same time, almost something sad. Then later clarifying that sad isn't quite the right word. It seems like it was the depth of Palpatine's fury which caused this wound, and it certainly wasn't unique to Leia. Mara Jade, who had been close to the Emperor as the Emperor's hand, also describes passing through the Death Star's destruction point as being extremely unpleasant, though unfortunately we don't actually get to see that happen. Leia in particular is fairly shaken up by the whole experience, and she thinks about it for some time after. Han too was quite upset, to put it mildly, when Leia explains that for a few seconds she could feel something like the Emperor's presence around her. Han responds with, a dead Emperor tries to make a grab for you, and you don't think it's worth a mentioning? Han's theory here is actually an interesting one, especially because in Dark Empire, Palpatine does try to possess their third child, Anakin. However, at this point, his spirit would not have physically been at Endor, having been returned to a somewhat physical form sometime after Endor. The timeline here isn't really clear to me, but we get some details about it in the Dark Empire source book. We know specifically though that Palpatine was alive and watched slash analyzed Thrawn's campaign from a distance. That's not to say that it's impossible that part of him did remain where he died. We do get the following quote about Palpatine's death from the Dark Empire source book. This time was so abrupt and unexpected, so unpleasant that it felt as if, perhaps, a part of his being had been left in space over Endor. He had spent a year disembodied, formless, drifting through the maddening void of the dark side. So basically, while the majority of Palpatine's soul was able to make it into a new clone body on Biss, it is possible that a small portion remained and that's what Leia and Mara felt. Perhaps this would even explain the blue energy scene after his death. However, I think more likely what they felt was simply a disturbance in the Force, a wound perhaps. 
Not dissimilar to something like the disturbance Obi-Wan felt after the destruction of Alderaan. However, instead of being despair from billions of people, it was an extreme amount of emotion from one very forceful being. It's also pretty similar to, as I mentioned earlier, a wound in the Force, which is typically tied to a traumatic loss of life. But that's all I have to say about this video. I told you guys it would be short. I will, however, take a hashtag ask at question of the day. Today's question comes from Josh, who asks, where I think Star Wars will take movies after the rise of Skywalker. I certainly think it will be a very, very long time before we move forward in the timeline, just because they want to move away from the Skywalker family. And it's hard to talk about the Star Wars universe in the current era without bringing that family and the story that we're all familiar with into to play. Instead, I think the most likely scenario is some sort of completely different context and a standalone trilogy or series, whether that's an Old Republic movie or something else, I'm not exactly sure. Had Solo done better, I think we'd be seeing shows like The Mandalorian maybe being in movie form, and I know there was some discussion about a Bounty Hunter movie, but I think it's probably appropriate that some of this current era stuff, but based on side characters, again like the Kenobi film or or the solo movie find their place on the small screen and personally I'm really really happy that that's the way the Mandalorian went because it allows them to tell a lot more of a comprehensive story and it also allows them to slow down smell the roses and just do things you wouldn't be able to do otherwise in a movie but that's all I have for today if you guys have a question you'd like me to answer down below leave it with the hashtag ask Eck. you've got to include the hashtag because that's how I search for questions in my YouTube community section but until next time this has been Eck. Have a great day and may the force be with you.